Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Colton, and in today's video, I wanna talk about something that has recently inspired me and maybe challenge you to get inspired as well. You know, inspiration is definitely something that can help us when we're lacking in motivation, but also when we're putting in the work and we just need to get creative and think outside the box and push it to that next level, inspiration really helps out a lot. So. I wanted to talk about something that has inspired me uh, recently. And over the last you know, year to two years, I've been working on my candy art series and I kind of committed to really focusing in on that series in particular for this year. So I've been really pushing myself to take photos often, to be thinking about what the next set of photos could be. And I recently took a photo that was top down and you know, I've done that style before, but this time I used kind of a mixed bag of candy from a Haribo, I think it's called Starburst um, package, and I threw in a lollipop into the mix and took that photo, and I really, really liked it, and I shared it out on Instagram, and I felt like, man, this is fun. This, this opened a new perspective for me in this series. And someone reached out and told me that it really reminded them of I Spy Books. Now, if you're not familiar with I Spy books, they are books where there's photographs and then kind of a list of things that you're supposed to find in the photograph. So it's kind of like a search and find or a seek and find style um, of puzzle. And I Spy is not the only one out there. The, another big one is Can You See What I See? Um, in the non-photographic realm, there's also Highlights Magazine that often had that kind of puzzle within their magazine. So a lot of different brands uh, of the same concept from different publishers. But iSpy was one that I remembered uh, interacting with a lot as a kid. And I agree, the photo definitely reminded me of some of those kind of top-down iSpy shots. So I went out to a local bookstore and I went and found, surprisingly, a very large section of these style of books. And I grabbed a few that didn't have any kind of, you know, uh, circles or pin marks uh, inside of them. And I was able to get an I Spy book. Actually grabbed a couple of these. And, you know, not only was there a nostalgia hit for me, uh, this was one of the, you know, my favorite kind of books to find if I was in a waiting room or if I went over to somebody's house, uh, if they had an I Spy book, I was about to lose my mind. And so um, flipping through here was definitely enjoyable, but I also saw a lot of similar styles of photographs. And just from the photographic standpoint, if you're into still lives at all, these books are essentially photography books that sort of have a secondary you know, search and find element, but that kind of makes them a very interesting deployment method for a photograph. It's like, yes, we have this photo book, but you're interacting with the book because we're asking you to find these things and we're, you know, kind of giving you a vehicle to look at this image for a long time and to really soak in all the details of the image. So really interesting concept just from a photo book standpoint but also the images themselves are highly creative um, and, and very similar to that photograph. So I started to look at this in a sense of like inspiration for me for additional photographs or additional styles that I could go for, or angles that I could go for. And I, I wanted to kind of maybe talk about a few of the images from the, the couple books that I bought and uh, you know what kind of thoughts that I have on them uh, and, and show you what also an I Spy book looks like. So without further ado, let's jump over and take a look at a few images. All right, so this is our I Spy book that I picked up at the local bookstore. But this first image already stands out to me as something very colorful, a lot of shadow play, similar angles to what I do. And so it was like, I got the right book, uh, inspiration-wise. Um, and then also this keyhole uh, type thing where we're looking into different sets. I thought that was a really cool idea that they implemented. So uh, just another one that was fun. 
But now we get over to one that really, really stood out to me, um, similar to my own type of stuff, where we have some colorful items, we have really strong shadow play, and we're even utilizing objects and shadows together to create whole new items like this little button man that's here, you know, using a button and a, a clothespin and a spoon and a fork and the shadow. So uh, I thought that was really cool. Similarly, this uh, sort of sand image, interesting concept, um, a lot of fun. And actually we have here probably the only illustration that's in any of the books that I saw. Mostly they are photographic based and as you can tell also very much from a certain time period, kind of that 90s vibe to a lot of these uh, photos that we have in this book. Um, also a top-down shot, very similar to the shot that I was doing uh, previously that got me inspired to look into these books. Um, and then similarly, just, you know, that concept on steroids, really inspiring stuff in this particular book. So that was one of the I Spy books I got. I also got this Can You See What I See book, uh, which was also, um, I you know, I don't know if this is how they all are, but very saturated, very 90s, very colorful. Um, interesting concept here is that we start above the bed, then we're below the bed. Uh, next, we are kind of underneath this chair, peering into this little world. Um, but then in the next page, we're now in that little world uh, that we just saw under the chair. And then we're kind of navigating the little world and we find a, you know, a rocket motors place and, and then we go inside the rocket motors place. And then I don't know exactly where the next page comes in or if it's a whole new concept altogether, but then we're kind of entering into this very saturated, very fantasy world, uh, which I am just like blown away by just looking at these images brings me so much joy, the color, the saturation, um, you know, a lot of little details here that are so much fun. And then we're kind of bringing ourselves back into, uh, you know, the kid's bedroom that we were just in. Um, so that book was interesting, kind of brought you along a little journey, which was, uh, which was really fun, but really, really inspiring stuff here. One of the best things about those books is just the nostalgia hit. If you were a kid when these books came out, I'm sure you're feeling it like I was, but also just to see the kinds of images that are in here. You know, some of these are timeless, but so many of them are so obviously from, you know, the 80s and the 90s and sort of maybe a hair into that early 2000s time period. Uh, but they're, they're very clearly of a certain era. And, uh, you know, these are not only great inspirations, but for me, they're going to be cherished photo books uh, to kind of show off next to my regular photo book. So I'm super excited uh, about that. But that has been what has been influencing me, kind of opening uh, some new perspectives for me, getting me to think about how did they do that shot or, uh, you know, why did they set it up a certain way or how might I, you know, utilize some of that in my own shots and I think that's already given me a burst of motivation, but also kind of a different idea in terms of creativity for these candy shots that I've been putting together. So I would also encourage you to do the same thing. You know, you don't have to be a photographer. You can be a videographer. You could be a painter, a drawer, someone who writes stories, uh, you know, a city planner even. You know, what do you have that can inspire you? And can you seek out that inspiration in mediums that aren't always the same? Now, I know in this case, I'm looking at a photo book and I'm taking photos, so the medium is very similar, but what else can you look at or, or can you participate in that might bring you inspiration, whether that's in the same medium as what you're creating or if it's in a totally different medium from what you're creating? You know, I would encourage you to sort of go out find those, experiment with those. Not everything that you interact with is gonna be inspiring, but when you do find that, it, it's enriching your own, um, you know, sort of, I guess, mind. <laughs> it's enriching your mind. Um, but then that's helping inform the creativity of your art. And you can take that and incorporate it into your unique voice and create something totally new 
inspired in part by something from another creator. And I think that's so cool that you can uh, be inspired by artists who've come before you. And in some way, the art that you then create has a little piece of them in it too. Um, and maybe I'm getting a little too sentimental here, but I, I really do think that is the case and what a huge compliment it is for someone to enjoy your art so much that they're inspired by it. And so I think any of them would be appreciative and certainly you would be appreciative too uh, in the future when someone takes inspiration from what you do. So find that inspiration. Let me know in the comments below what is inspiring you if you liked these particular books, but also what else out there in the world do you find inspiring? Because who knows, you might give me a great lead on something that might also in turn inspire me as well. So anyway, that is it for the video. If you enjoyed it, do give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and that'll keep you in the know for when the next video drops. But for now, I'm Colton. I'll see you in the next one.